Whoa, hey look, it's a pulsar. I guess that's the main topic of this video. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the recent advances and recent discoveries in regards to some of the more unusual pulsars out there. Objects that, as you might already know, are essentially extremely fast spinning neutron stars that produce very powerful jets. Jets that once in a while we get to see from planet Earth as they shine directly at us. And though quite a few different pulsars have been discovered in the last few decades, some of them are so extreme and so unique that they actually have their own categories and their own explanations and descriptions. And extremely recently, scientists using European Southern Observatory and the Very Large Telescope released an analysis and a detailed explanation about one of the more extreme, more unique such objects. The object known as J1023. A pulsar with very strange behavior not usually observed anywhere else. So for example, in a typical pulsar, you would observe something like this. This is coming from the famous crab pulsar we're going to discuss really soon. Essentially regular pulsations in a relatively similar frequency. Usually radio waves, sometimes x-rays, but in reality it can be anything depending on the environment and the overall strength of the jets, the magnetic field and the accretion disk. We're of course seeing this because of this. The jets, as the pulsar spins, passes right through where planet Earth is. And these are usually extremely precise and almost never change in terms of frequency or even in terms of the actual period. Relatively recently, scientists using pulsars were even able to calculate precise changes in gravitational waves across the entire galaxy, detecting minute gravitational waves with extremely long wavelengths. You can learn more about this in the description below. But as always, there are some exceptions. And this pulsar seems to be one. It still has the same servo period, but once in a while, quite frequently, it completely changes what frequency it tends to emit. Like other pulsars, it emits radio waves for a few seconds, maybe even several minutes, just to then switch completely and emit X-rays, ultraviolet and visible light instead. So it basically has these two completely separate phases. Sometimes it's a radio pulsar, like most pulsars out there, then it goes, nope, now I'm an X-ray optical pulsar. So yeah, it does this for maybe a few seconds, sometimes up to a minute, then switches back again. And during two nights of observations a couple of years ago, scientists that were studying this pulsar discovered that it did so 280 times, transitioning between two modes with somewhat regular periods. As if there was some kind of a separate pulsation inside the pulsar, basically making this some kind of a double pulsar. Today they refer to this as the high mode when it's in X-ray mode or the low mode when it's just doing radio waves. But because this object is pretty far away, 4500 light years away from planet Earth, it did take a while to finally solve this mystery. And it essentially involves, for the lack of better words, cosmic cannonballs. Turns out that once in a while, the pulsar launches these huge chunks of matter that as they travel away from the pulsar, reduce the amount of matter around it and make the system glow less brightly, essentially only emitting radio waves. But because this pulsar has a partner, it tends to steal a lot of this gas from the partner, which then accumulates around the accretion disk and moves closer and closer to the neutron star. As a lot of this matter accumulates around the pulsar, it naturally starts to be hit by the pulsar winds that constantly flow away from the pulsar due to the fast rotation of the pulsar, but also due to the powerful electromagnetic effects. Pulsar winds are actually responsible for forming pulsar wind nebula that form these enormous structures around pulsars. These objects are really fascinating and we'll discuss them in a separate video really soon. So yeah, subscribe if you want to learn more. And so as the pulsar winds interact with the infolin matter, they tend to heat up all of this matter which starts to glow in X-rays, ultraviolet or visible light depending on the location and depending on the amount of energy. This is essentially when we see the pulsar in the high mode. But at some point, so much of it accumulates around that it's all suddenly expelled as a kind of a burp which happens every few seconds or sometimes every few minutes, which seems to be exactly what we're seeing from planet Earth. And though by itself this might not sound too exciting, it does become more exciting when you actually start connecting this to a different type of an object that we usually refer to as spiders, or I guess spider neutron stars, although more commonly known as black widow pulsars. Here's one, I guess the most famous one, discovered a few decades ago. 
And these objects are really fascinating because, just as the name suggests, these are stars that are literally eating their own partners. And to the point where they actually have eaten most of the partner, leaving almost nothing behind. One of the most interesting such objects discovered a few years back essentially included what seems to be a planetary object in this orbit that used to be a star. In other words, the neutron star, or the spider, has completely consumed and expelled most of the star's mass, turning it into a planet. That older video in the description describes this in a little bit more detail, but what's interesting here is that a lot of similar systems seem to have a very similar mechanism in destroying these stars and in feeding on them. It's essentially a combination of very powerful jets and extremely powerful pulsar winds that don't just produce tiny burps, but they actually produce very, very powerful emissions, powerful enough to start affecting objects nearby. And so there's actually a chance that maybe this is the beginning of one of these objects. As it sort of increases its burps, and as it starts expelling more and more mass, it may eventually start producing so much that its partner is going to start losing its mass due to very powerful evaporation effects, which intriguingly leaves behind this iconic tail. The tail that can be visible from extremely far away distances and can actually be light years long. But to become a black widow or a spider pulsar, the star has to decrease in mass quite dramatically. For example, by definition, if the companion star is less than 10% of the solar mass, we refer to it as a black widow. If it's more than 10% of the solar mass, we usually call them redbacks. Okay, honestly, it's just semantics, but at least for now, that's how it is. And to date, about 20 Black Widow pulsars have been discovered so far, but also 10 redbacks that will eventually become Black Widows as well. And it's generally believed that they most likely form from these millisecond pulsars, very similar to the one in this study. As a matter of fact, in one of the recent studies from 2023, Amy Knight and her colleagues discovered what they refer to as a false widow which represents some kind of a X-ray binary where the process of ablation has already kind of started, but is not super active just yet. In other words, they actually found evidence for highly energized material around the star, suggesting that the spider phase may have already started, but it's still in early development. And so it doesn't really have that funky tail just yet, because the ablation is still inefficient, but it's already pushing away material from the star, suggesting that the star is already falling apart. And so it would be really interesting to see what connection it has to this new discovery, because it does sort of look like the beginning of such process. An even more recent study discovered another binary pulsar, with the orbit of just 53 minutes, where the companion star is already only 0.07 solar masses, implying that it's somewhere between a redback and a black widow pulsars, representing yet another transition stage, and suggesting this is some kind of an evolutionary process for many binary pulsar systems. Intriguingly, its partner has technically been designated as a planet. A pulsar planet with a mass of 70 Jupiters and an orbital period of 0.04 days. Although technically it would be a brown dwarf, and I guess more technically, a former star. But what's still not entirely clear is, I guess, what is the ultimate fate of these objects? What do they actually become at the end? At some point, they obviously have to stop eating, and they'll probably lose a lot of energy, with the object eventually remaining permanently stuck in orbit. But what sort of system develops at the end is of course something we're not going to be able to answer for quite some time. And mostly because they will no longer be pulsars, and would be extremely difficult to detect. We can obviously see them now because they produce so many powerful emissions. Once they quiet down and become just neutron stars with a planet in their orbit, that's when finding them becomes a bit of a problem. Although I'm sure in the next few years, especially because of new telescopes, we'll probably find another black widow that could be approaching its end days, allowing us to maybe calculate or find ways to calculate what all of these objects become at the end. It's definitely some kind of a binary system with potentially a brown dwarf or maybe even a Jupiter-like planet in their orbit, but only future will tell, at the moment nobody knows. But we'll definitely be able to know soon because the way we study pulsars now has dramatically improved in just the last few years. Even the iconic crab pulsar that's been studied for decades has just recently revealed more surprises. In this case, this was detected in the X-rays by using NASA's IXPE telescope, but in a nutshell, it shows us that the Crab Nebula pulsar wind creates a somewhat unusual magnetic shape 
with extremely patchy turbulence and extremely different intensity inside of it. Even though mathematical models predicted this to be somewhat smooth, it turns out the magnetic fields here are very unusual, very patchy, very chaotic, and extremely asymmetrical. And why? Well, we don't know yet, but we'll talk more about this in that feature video on Pulsar with Nebula. Because even though pulsars are quite fascinating on their own, the unusual formations they produce around them, Pulsar Wind Nebula, deserve their own investigation in some of the future videos. So we'll definitely come back and talk more about this in the video that's going to be on the channel relatively soon. On that note, you can find all of the relevant links about these studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.